So I thought it was scarily fitting that the day Jacinta and I uh, confirmed I was speaking at Creative Mornings, um, the largest chunk of ice broke off Antarctica. And um, it was a bit of a reminder that um, the time really is now to make change amidst, um, amidst the climate change we're facing and a lot of social upheaval. Um, <clears throat> And this, this year we've seen huge acts of, um, of solidarity to, um, sorry, to, yeah, to bring about this change. And we've also seen some change happen, which has been really exciting. Yeah, so to, to find my place in the world and how the context, context of the world relates to me, um, I've really uh, come to the conclusion that to make the world a better place, I can do it through two things, and that's through better business and better design. But before I delve in, I just wanted to um, take you through my involvement in the Brisbane creative community, which um, has been a really big part of my life. So I worked at uh, Galimba Indigenous Creative Agency for four years, and this was a really incredible time of learning, and I got to experience a whole side of Australia that, um, that not many people do get to experience in such close context and it really changed me as a person. Um, I also spent a short and sweet time creating the box with a handful of wonderful Brisbane creatives and we, um, I think we created something pretty amazing. It just didn't have the, um, the longevity that we hoped it to have. Um, and then I also have um, run No Likes No Life Road Brisbane for about four years and that was oh. just about <laughs> creating a, um, a safe space for people to dance in the dark once a week. So I've, um, I've uh, experienced so much incredible um, support and, um, and inspiration through the Brisbane creative community. Um, even though I do now live in Sweden, it's super lovely to be back and, um, and to be able to, yeah, still feel like this community is one I belong to. Um, but now my, uh, my main squeeze is Seljack Brand and um, this is a company I founded with my sister Karina. And Seljack Brand is really about um, taking into account um, the, people of world, the people of the world and also the environment to create better solutions for everyone. So we envision a world without waste and a world that is more inclusive um, and also more community, uh, community driven. So <clears throat> to give you a little, back, little bit of background on um, Seljak, it's my surname. And it's also a, a Slovenian name, which is where my family is from. Um, and my grandparents were actually refugees to Canada in World War II. And they um, were given $10 when they entered the country and they, um, they didn't know the language. And uh, instead, of, um, instead of being completely defeated, as I feel like I would have been, they worked incredibly hard, um, started and failed with multiple businesses and, um, and yeah, pretty much were some of the most resourceful people I know. So um, to me, Seljack Brand really is um, a, a symbol of um, resourcefulness and entrepreneurship and that's what the name Seljack really embodies for me. This is my grandfather on the left there at one of his business uh, ventures, which was a um, ski slope called Old Smoky. I think, uh, I think this is Halloween on the ski slopes. Um, and yeah, I feel as though they kind of used uh, lean startup principles long before they were made cool. Um, they launched with minimal viable products and they failed fast and they moved on and then they created something else. Um, and this, <clears throat> alongside um, being taught by my Australian grandmother the importance of make, do and mend, um, has really kind of shaped my sister and I into being really resourceful people and um, kind of rejecting the mass 
consumerism that we um, see all around us. So um, at its essence, uh, Celljack brand really believes that waste is a design flaw and we, we instead embrace design philosophies that take into account the whole life cycle of a product. So, <coughs> so in terms of um, in yeah, in terms of design, this is um, this is using regenerative design models and closed loop thinking to create products that um, that will uh, use the Earth's resources in a way that is um, ongoing and infinite, um, instead of um, yeah, instead of creating a throwaway culture, which is uh, what we have today. So <clears throat> this really is the this really is the essence of Celljack brand, um, and we've we've gotten a lot of inspiration from the circular economy, which is um, which is a school of thought that rejects the take make waste paradigm that is um, that is so prevalent in today's society. Um, and our first product is kind of our, our proof of concept to, to prove that this kind of design really can be done. We've created a um, recycled merino wool blanket and it's made out of offcuts from the factory floor and it's um, woven in an old wool mill down in Tasmania. And um, the... <coughs> the, um, the Blanket is um, is one that has a lot of extreme longevity. The blankets from this mill have been known to outlive their owners, um, and so for yeah, for us the product was really um, really needed to be of extremely high quality. Um, as um, yeah, as we were speaking about before, um, the key for Saldak brand really is about um, closing the loop. Oh. After our blankets have enjoyed a long and adventurous life, um, we have a collection scheme. So we uh, pick the blankets back up free of charge of our, from our customers and we reincorporate them back into the manufacturing process. So um, this, yeah, this uh, closed loop thinking means our product will never end up in landfill. It also means um, Subject Brand is taking full responsibility for the life cycle of the product. Um, and it's this kind of thinking where I feel that um, a lot of companies are, yeah, are avoiding that, you know, taking the responsibility um, throughout the whole, yeah, throughout the whole life of a product. So I'll just take you through the process. Um, we use waste that's from the factory floor. Um, and this can vary in, um, in yeah, makeup and that kind of thing, but it's generally 70% merino wool and then 30% um, recycled alpaca, uh, recycled mohair, sometimes a little bit of cashmere, some cotton, um, and it is um, shredded and um, spun into a new yarn. So this is... This is how the process looks. Um, and this new yarn is then woven into a blanket. Um, and <clears throat> yeah, and what we can see here is the final product. Um, and this, um, yeah, this is Seljack Brand's first, uh, first product on the market. So, this, um, this concept of taking responsibility for the, um, for the whole life cycle of the product is echoed with the inertia principle, which is, um, which is this one, um, which says, do not repair what is not broken. Do not remanufacture something that can be repaired. Do not recycle a product that can be remanufactured and replace or treat only the smallest possible part in order to maintain value. So in closed loop thinking, um, the resources you're using should always be used at their highest possible 
um, possible value. And remanufacture should actually be one of the last resorts. Recycling should never happen because that's inevitably a downgrade of the use of the product. So um, the, the longevity of Sodak brand blankets is also part of the sustainability thinking that is that we want these blankets to last people a really long time before they even need to remanufacture. Um, but of course, we have that covered as well. Um, we have some customers who are maybe hotels or, um, yeah, or, um, you know, camping companies that uh, would, you know, use their blankets a lot more regularly and um, would, you know, they'd be really kind of, um, yeah, run through the mill, so to speak. And these are the kind of customers that we really think will be able to use the collection scheme um, to, to their advantage. So the other, um, the other side of Seljuk brand is uh, the social entrepreneurial side, which is um, uh, something that, that is yeah, focused on the community that we're working with. So for um, every 10 blankets a Seljuk brand sells, we donate one to the Asylum Seeker Resource Centre in Melbourne. Um, and this is... Um, yeah, this is obviously really close to our heart because of um, our grandparents' journey. And, you know, we really believe that refugees and asylum seekers can enrich our lives and provide so much more value to a community, um, <clears throat> yeah, when they're taken care of and, um, and yeah, given resources and support. Um, so our, th the simple donation scheme we have at the moment is the very start we would love to be able to work with um, refugees and asylum seekers um, to um, employ them in the mill one day and, um, and yeah, have them uh, kind of more part of the production process of Seljuk Brand. And this is a conversation we've started with the mill, but it's a long one. Um, and of course, we don't own that mill. So um, yeah, we're working in collaboration with others to make this happen. Um, but it's part of the Seljuk brand trajectory to, um, to really, um, yeah, in, incorporate that model into our, um, into our business. So moving ahead to where Seljuk brand is today, um, we've been doing business for just under two years now. Um, and during this time, we've been approached by lots of different textiles companies from around Australia who have been inspired by our business model and have a lot of textiles waste themselves and they want to find sustainable solutions for it. So we've had companies that have done a rebrand and they might have um, uniforms that no longer are um, usable by their company or they might be offcuts from production or they could even be post-consumer textiles, old clothes, those kinds of things. And so this is the challenge Sajak Brand is facing at the moment, is how can we provide a sustainable solution that's scalable for all of these companies around Australia? And so earlier this year, we did a crowdfunding campaign because um, this kind of research and development needs resources. And so we, um, yeah, we funded a, um, a research and development process that we're still in at the moment um, with crowdfunding. And um, it's kind of really about starting somewhere because um, while, um, yeah, while it might not look like much, um, this ball of grey um, is our first successful trial of using a, um, a company's waste that doesn't belong to the mill, so external waste from the mill um, <clears throat> through, the, through the mill's sh uh, shredder and ragger. Um, to potentially spin into a new yarn. So it was a big win for us. Um, and yeah, this is a, um, this is a ball of recycled um, organic cotton, linen, and, um, and um, other natural fibers like lyocell. Um, and this is from a custom, um, custom made t-shirt company in Sydney. And they want to they want to move into closed loop thinking with their um, with their production. So 
we're teaming up with them to hopefully turn this into a new yarn and then we'll be able to weave a lighter weight blanket which we can then um, you know use throughout the year because I'm sure you guys all feel like using a really thick heavy woolen blanket right now <laughs> Um, yeah, so I guess reflecting on, um, reflecting on my experience with Seljack Brand, um, I really think that starting somewhere and doing is the best, uh, the best place to start. And this kind of aligns to launching with the minimum viable product, um, like my grandparents do and like the Lean Startup principles uh, embodies as well. Um, and so I think that, um, I think I came across this little one at a Google talk the other day, doing is the new thinking. And obviously you need to have a um, well-considered um, philosophy and, um, you know, a thought out uh, process, but I think it's really important to just like dive in and start somewhere because the feedback that you get from the community, your future customers, um, all those kinds of things is really what um, makes your brand richer and a lot faster than, um, than launching with a perfect product. Um, the other thing I believe in is um, surrounding yourself with people who are more experienced than you. So for Seljack Brand, um, we've been really heavily inspired by companies like Mud Jeans. They're doing circular denim in the Netherlands and you actually never own a pair of Mud Jeans, you rent them out because they will take them back at the end. They, they inevitably just own the jeans and you're just borrowing them for when you need them. There's also um, Swedish stockings and these are, um, this is a company of uh, two women in Sweden who are collecting old stockings from, um, from consumers. They don't have to be their own brand and then they recycle the stockings, use the recycled yarn to um, to make new stockings and I think this is a particularly interesting one because how many of us have pulled a pair of stockings on and there's a hole the moment you put them on kind of thing it's just it's a product that people have started to buy and throw out the next day um, so yeah these are I think this is a really inspiring company as well um, and they give you a discount when you send in your old stockings which is cool um, the other thing is knowing your thought leaders so there are people out there in your industry and community who have already done all the hard work for you. So for Seljack Brand, we're really inspired by Braungart, who's one of the founders of Cradle to Cradle. Um, Cradle to Cradle is the, um, I guess, academic um, uh, thought leader of um, closed loop thinking. And um, he says that Minimizing harm is not being sustainable and that we need a revolution. And this is kind of around the idea like of, uh, of rather than reducing your carbon footprint, actually redesigning the whole process so carbon is never even an uh, externality of something. So I think this is a really good and challenging um, quote to take away when you think about closed loop thinking because for example, when I flew here from Sweden, I probably, um, <clears throat> I probably used the amount of carbon that would be me not eating meat for 10 years. Um, and I'm interested to know why there isn't a different op option for me to take, so I don't have to do that. So I think this is really about inspiring completely revolutionary design. Um, we're also, um, following Janine Benius and she is um, one of the founders of Biomimicry and this is about copying nature to create sustainable solutions. So nature was the original closed looper and um, she says the answers to how to live sustainably um, are on our, on our planet all around us. So this is really fascinating because um, at the moment, it feels like we're often working against nature, not with it, and we're not taking this, you know, uh, knowledge that has been created over millions of years into account when we're designing. Um, so I think that's another really interesting, interesting one to think about. 
So to put all of this into the context of um, Seljak Brand's vision, which is imagining a world without waste, um, I really feel as though um, with better design comes better business and better business enables better design. So for Karina and I, we would like to one day design ourselves out of a job. That is when we no longer have any waste to work with. And uh, that's the end of my talk. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm.